All right, guys, today I wanted to make a video about Real Madrid beating Chelsea by two goals to nil. And it, it was a comfortable win for Real Madrid, but I still think this isn't a bad result for Chelsea, given the circumstances with uh, how they were down to 10 men. It's at the Bernabeu, second leg at Stamford Bridge. It's not impossible. It'll be ridiculously hard for them to come back from this. And given the season they're having and how the team is performing at the moment, uh, like over the past few games and the fact that they haven't scored in over five hours of football, I, I think you would be a sensible person in putting your money on Real Madrid to get to the semi-final. But it's definitely not impossible and it's not the worst result in the world. First half, Real Madrid just played some fantastic football and they were just like creating space that just didn't seem possible to create given the way that Chelsea had set up with five at the back and three. I wouldn't say def completely defensively minded midfielders, but it, th there's no, you know, midfielder in that three who you look at and think, oh, he's, he's not uh, going to be disciplined. Like Kante, Fernandes and Kovacic, they're, they're all hard workers in that Chelsea midfield. But Real Madrid just it, like seemed to spray the ball around superbly. I think the first goal uh, is the best example of it. The play starts down the left-hand side, but uh, Tony Kroos finds a, a bit of space 40 yards out from goal. He only needs one touch and a ball over the top, and it is a perfect ball over the top to get Vinicius on the end of it, and Benzema smartly follows up the rebound. And... Yeah, it, it it was a well well worked, well taken goal from Benzema as well, but um, Real Madrid were just class in terms of the football they played. Uh, the the midfield three of Valverde, Modric, and Kroos were brilliant. Camavinga at left back even played very well in, I wouldn't say an unfamiliar position because he's played it quite a few times this season, but it's still not uh, where he operates best. I don't think. So yeah, this this is a you know an impressive first half performance we were looking at for Real Madrid. But second half, Chelsea didn't manage to create enough chances. The best chance that they created was uh, for Sterling in the first half, which Courtois produced a magnificent save to stop. And and they had a couple of chances in the first half. In fairness, but second half they were never really going to create anything, especially after. The red cards and for me it was a definite red card if we're being honest uh, I don't think Ben Chilwell was uh, helped by the defending of his teammates uh, particularly Kukurera I thought but it, it was it was one of them where he has to do something about it because Rodrigo's going to get a good chance to score maybe it wasn't the right decision because Rodrigo wasn't nailed on to score but he had to do something about it, didn't he? And it's not like he's full on chopped him down. He's just tugged his arm a bit, which, yeah, Rodrigo, you know, took the bait and got the free kick and the sending off for Chilwell. And at that point, Chelsea were always going to, you know, stick 10 men, well, not, well, nine men in this case, because they subbed on Havertz and stuck him up front on his own, uh, which wasn't very effective, to be honest, as you can probably imagine, because there's been... A lot of games recently where Havertz hasn't been very effective when he has got players around him. So without players around him, it wasn't really going to work. So yeah, it, it was just one of them where they were just trying to limit the damage uh, that Real Madrid could cause in this game with the extra man advantage. In the end, they, they managed to get the extra, well, double their lead through uh, one of their substitutes, uh, Marco Asensio. It was it was a good strike, but I think he, even though the ball does go through, I think it was for Farner's legs. I still think Kepa should be saving that, given that he gets a hand to it. It's, it's uh, gone off his hands and onto the post and in. So yeah, it was it wasn't a great uh, moments for Kepa. I I wouldn't say. Um, but yeah, they, realistically, this is going to be Real Madrid through to the semi-final now and I think they probably stand a good opportunity a good chance sorry of uh, 
winning the competition because I, I still fancy them against Manchester City, even with Erling Haaland on the pitch for City. I just think if Real Madrid can get into, you know, their flow the, with that City back three, I, I just think that they, they could quite easily, t- you know, get get past that a few on a few occasions. But yeah, it, it will be interesting to see either, either way. Uh, the the other game tonight, Napoli and AC Milan. AC Milan taking a one goal lead at uh, San Siro. Um, that'll be important for them going into the second leg because Napoli could potentially have Victor Rossman back, and that could make a huge difference. So that that's definitely uh, out of all the games so far, that's definitely the one to look out for in the second leg because at the moment it looks like into Man City and Real Madrid. Uh, you know. 90% there in terms of uh, getting through to the semi-final. But, but uh, the, uh, the Napoli AC Milan could be a very good second leg, especially if Osman and is uh, back fit, because Napoli really lacks something when he's not playing. But back back to uh, tonight's game. Uh, it, it wasn't the most exciting game ever, especially after the red cards. There, there just wasn't... Um, like... It, enough there wasn't enough energy in it really because Real Madrid sort of sat back and well not sat back but di- didn't really full on apply the pressure on, on Chelsea and I think that's partly down to the fact that you know when when Re- Chelsea uh, cleared the ball up the pitch Chelsea never pushed up the pitch they just sort of sat in their own defensive third and just sort of said we'll let you take long shots we're just going to stop you from getting in goal scoring positions so yeah they, they they just completely wanted to limit the damage tonight Chelsea uh, so yeah the, the red card sort of ruined the, the game in this one to be honest uh, because there was a, a very outside chance of Chelsea potentially getting a late equaliser or something but even just looking at this starting 11 that Frank Lampard picked for this game I think the 3-5-2 yeah it, it was probably the right system but Sterling and Felix up front, and I know Chelsea don't really have a lot going for them when it comes to forward players, but it, it just doesn't really strike fear into the opponents, I don't think. I think having Sterling, Felix and maybe, you know, a top striker could definitely, you know, cause a few problems, but it's just lacking someone to hold the ball up or someone to find a, a, a half a yard of space in the area. Because Sterling isn't really that player. Sterling's at his best when he's picked up the ball on the left-hand side of the box and he can, you know, sort of cut inside and get a shot off. Similar thing with Felix. Maybe Felix's game is more bringing the ball forward, carrying it past a couple of players and then trying to get a shot off. But they haven't got anyone who can you know just guarantee to finish off a chance and that that's been a problem for them for a while now they've spent all this money and they haven't got one of the most important things a team can have a goal scorer so yeah it's just one of them where i, I don't think top bailey's really thought through transfer strategies in terms of how he wants to build the starting 11 he's got a great squad of players in terms of um individuals but it, it's it's very hard to put them all together when there's you know an overload in one position and not enough in in the other in fact I, I don't know why they left a Bamiang out of the Champions League squad to be honest I get there's um January signings they wanted to include Madrid, Felix and Fernandez but is Mudrick really necessary? I mean, he hasn't really played a part, has he? But at least with a Bamiang, you're getting a proven goal scorer. I know he has problems and baggage with just like his his personality and who he is and how, how he holds himself. But you need someone like that in your team, at least, because without him, it is just poor to watch, to be honest, at times. And even like someone like David Datro Fafana, just someone who who is a forward. Like it's it's just crying out for it, to be honest. But yeah, Real Madrid, they're they're just a, a class above Chelsea. I think 
even before the sending off, you, you could sort of tell that. So, yeah, uh, I, th I think Real Madrid, I probably have them down as favourites right now. It's between them and Man City, isn't it, for favourites? Um, so, yeah, the semi-final is going to feel like a final, I think, a little bit. Because if, if AC Milan managed to hold on to their lead and play Inter in the semis, I'd expect it AC to win that, but I, I wouldn't put money on either of them beating Man City or Real Madrid to be honest so I think we could we could be in for a one-sided final potentially this year um, because just because of how how good Man City and uh, Real Madrid are in, in knockout football right now but yeah anyway thanks for watching this video and I'll see you next time